Hey, Boat Canvas Boot Campers. Uh, it's Mike Reese here, and uh, as promised, I said I would go through and um, uh, make a video on how to do uh, what effectively was our homework assignment from the um, time we spent together this past weekend. And um, so we'll make a tote out of uh, recycled till material, which is, uh, I think, it'll be a fun project and we'll utilize a lot of the skills that we worked on over the weekend. If uh, you happen to see this on YouTube and not associated with uh, the boot camp uh, that we hold, my name is Mike Reese. I have a company called Seabound Canvas, but I also work with Skagit Valley College and the Cruisers College part of uh, that organization to teach a variety of boating subjects to, um, to people in the community. And uh, one of the things I'm really passionate about is doing Marine Canvas, and, uh, and we do... Uh, just started to do a bunch of um, uh, a variety, we hope, of classes with regard to uh, boat canvas so people can learn how to do it themselves. And for more information, if you're getting it and not familiar with the, what we're doing, you can check out cruiserscollege.org and um, check out our, uh, our lineup. Uh, not only uh, uh, boat canvas and things of that sort, but also a variety of different subjects. All right, well with that out of the way, let's get started uh, making a tote. What I'll do is uh, shift the camera here. Obviously, I'm just shooting this alone. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience doing it, but I wanted to make sure that you guys could see how I would approach the project um, so that you have a, the best possible chance of doing a great job yourself. So let's get rolling. Okay, um, so we'll try and keep my ugly mug out of the rest of the video and just focus on the material and my sewing. I also won't take you every minute by minute of me making it. Uh, for everything I'll teach you, there's uh, typically, uh, you have to do two of them. So from one side, you have to do the other side. Uh, you have to sew uh, the bag together on both sides. So I'll just show you one side to keep the video at a manageable length. High level, the first thing you wanna do with the kit that we gave you um, at, at the boot camp. You had two lengths of webbing. The first one should be a short length, and that's 48 inches. And the purpose of that is to go across the top of the bags. There's a couple ways you can do it. I think what I'm gonna do is just do a straight line and sew uh, the webbing on the outside like this. And I'll show you how I'll put it together in a second. Uh, but another thing you could do if you felt like you wanted it to have a a more finished edge on the inside, you can take the webbing and uh, simply fold it like we, uh, not unlike the binding we covered in class. Let me, I think I have to change that a little bit. There we go. Um, so you can just fold it and in this case, wrap it around the, the top of the, the bag, uh, staple it, particularly at the beginning and the end, but also stabilize the webbing to the panel across the top and then sew it uh, the way we taught in class. Uh, but for me, I think I, what I'd like to do is just simply um, place the webbing along top and, um, and go from there. So what I'm going to do basically, uh, if I was making this, normally if I was making this for myself, I'd use two-sided basting tape uh, just to tack down the full length of the webbing. But because I know you're probably making this uh, with home materials and may not have that, we'll discuss the other method that actually I prefer in a lot of ways, and that's just simply using staples. So literally, I'm just going to go along here, and I'm going to make sure that I overlap slightly on my webbing. Uh, by Not overlap, but extend past the bag just slightly, just so... Uh, the sail material is obscured. I'm going to do that. And then uh, I am going to flip it around and do the other side. And again, probably basting tape might be a, a little preferred if you had it, but uh, not really required. One more. If 
Okay, now normally I would sew this and then go on to the next step, but because I wanted to limit the, um, the amount of camera moving around, particularly because I'm not all that great at it, I wanted to um, just do kind of my prep in one location and then go over to the sewing machine and show you uh, how I sew it together. So here, well, hopefully you can see there. So in the panel that I, the kit that I, I cut for you, there should be six dots on the outside and they're located roughly an inch down from the, um, from the top of each side. So there's a dot here, a dot here, in the center there's a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here, and a dot here. Again, about an inch down from the side. And those are simply used as reference points for the handle that we're going to attach next. Again, like I said with the top, the other thing I would do on this particular uh, tote, if I was making it, is I would put uh, double-sided tape from dot uh, from outside dot to outside dot, uh, just so that I could stabilize the handles as they came around. And in fact, I've not done it this way yet, the way I'm about to show you, because I normally have double-sided tape around, but I recognize that you don't. Um, but to get started, what we're going to do is take the long piece of webbing that we gave you. So this should be, I think, 108 inches. Something like that. And I'm just going to uh, match up the, uh, the two ends and I'm going to bring it together. So, um, so that I can find the absolute center of it. You could obviously measure it out, but that, uh, you know, takes some time. The other thing I have in my shop, this is Taylor's chalk. So you can see it's just a thin sort of triangle of chalk. And the good part about that is it rubs up pretty nicely on the webbing and it comes off of course easily as well. Um, and so this webbing, you can see the, this, this is the center of the 108 inch long part of the, of the webbing. And uh, the way I like to do it is I place the outside edge of the webbing just so that it covers the dot that I've made, uh, meaning that the bulk of the webbing extends further towards the center of the bag. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then I'm gonna come in and I'm going to staple that a couple spots probably. Then I'm gonna extend, um, I'm just going to extend this, just pull it tight to the outside dot, and I'm going to staple that as well. So you can see that, again, that uh, under normal, uh, if you had double-sided tape, I'd recommend that you run a piece from, from dot to dot and then uh, put it on like that. I'll do this other side now. Again, I just kind of hold, pull tight, make sure that the dot is covered up, and throw it in a staple. Okay, so now I'm going to spin it around so that I can kind of complete things. The only thing important here is just making sure that the webbing we gave you isn't twisted as you bring it around. I'll try and get it where you can kind of see it a little bit. Um, all right, so essentially what you do is just pull it around here loosely, making sure it's not tangled. And then you're gonna bring it down to the other set of dots. Now, I'm because I spun it around, the, the other side is now closest to me. And I'm going to place the edge just slightly overlapping the uh, center line dot. And I'm gonna to staple that and then I'm going to make sure it's it's a nice uh, uh, line up to this other one the uh, the dot closest to the edge and I'm going to lay that down 
All right, so I, I'll do this to the other side. This way uh, um, we don't make the video too long. So um, just hang tight and I'll come back as soon as that's done and we're ready to sew. All right, thanks. All right, so here's my bag prepped for sewing. So you can see on one end, we've got the top uh, stapled ready to go. The handles comes all the way down to the other side and does the exact same thing. So uh, today I didn't have my Sailrite machine out from the weekend, so I'm just gonna use what, one of my normal canvas uh, business machines. This is a Juki 1508, really a workhorse of a, of a machine, can sew through just about anything. It's got a servo motor, has a needle positioner, so it's really a, a real efficient uh, machine to use uh, day in and day out. So all I'm gonna do here, uh, so even though I'm using an industrial machine, the lessons that we learned during the boot camp about using the Sailrite machine all apply. So if I were to, were to want to um, uh, pivot my material, I would stop, make sure my needle's buried, which is in this case one of the good things about having a needle positioner is it always ends in the down position, so I have to roll the balance wheel all the time. Um, but again, the turning's the same thing. So uh, bury the needle, raise the presser foot, pivot the material, lower the presser foot, continue to sew. So again, that's, that's all the same. You just won't see me uh, with a lever doing that because um, when you have a machine like this, it has a knee, pa a knee uh, lift. So you can see just by moving my leg back and forth, um, the, the um, foot goes up and down. All right, so let's, uh, let's just kind of get started. So this, uh, basically all I'm gonna do is do two rows of, uh, of um, uh, two rows of stitching along this, probably about an eighth of an inch or so from the uh, end of each side. And um, again, we'll just start doing that the way we taught. So even though this is a situation where you wouldn't need to back tack because we start within what will become the inner seam of the bag, I'll still do it because um, it's kind of consistent with the way we discussed, you know, we kind of taught is there's really no harm in doing it. Sometimes it's just not necessary. Um, so so uh, we'll do a couple lines, here we go. One of the things you'll notice is, remember, I'm really just focused on the amount of work right in front of me uh, in terms of my sewing attention. I don't really worry about what's, what else is going on in the world. If it was falling off the table or something, I'd be able to feel that there's tension in my sewing area, and then I would address it then. But otherwise, I just kind of ignore the rest of it. And then with the uh, with the needle positioner, I just tap my uh, my speed the treadle, and it lifts up uh, automatically. So again, another nice feature of of um... oh, I didn't get my didn't bring my cardinal sin. I didn't bring my scissors with me. All right. Um, so I'm going to now just do, I'll do this on camera, then I'll stop as I worry about the next one. So now I'm just coming to the inner side. I'm just lining up the toe in this particular case of my, my inner toe of the machine to the, uh, the webbing so that I can get it just close to, um, close to the edge. Okay, so uh, me be back here in a second when I'm uh, ready to go onto the handle. Thanks. 
Okay, before I move on to the handles, uh, because I cut the webbing, the webbing will fray very easily. So I'm just taking a hot knife. Um, as we talked about at the boot camp, you could use um, a hot knife. You could use just a lighter uh, if you wanted to melt the ends. You could use a soldering gun. Lots of different ideas there. If you get excited about doing marine canvas for yourself, I would say that it's um, uh, it really makes sense to buy, invest in some of the tools you need to um, to do a good job. You'll find it a much more enjoyable hobby uh, if you have at least the, a few of the right tools. Hey, speaking of which, I've been talking to uh, uh, yesterday. I called Kai, the guys who make the Kai seventy two fifties. Well, of course, they're made in Japan, but the the importer and I might be able to looks like I might be able to get kind of a, a bulk purchase um, I told them about teaching uh, the course and the fact that I all, everyone got to use Kai 7250s which I believe are the you know the absolute best possible uh, shear or scissor for uh, this work and um, they're getting back with me, I should hear in a day or two. But if you're interested in getting a pair for a discount, so you can get them on Amazon right now, they're about 67 bucks. Um, but if we could save another 10 or whatever percent, um, or maybe even more, hopefully, maybe. Um, so if you're interested in maybe getting a deal or, or finding out what the price of a deal I could get, uh, just uh, email me, you guys have my email address. Uh, email me and let me know you're interested and um, and I'll see if I can work some out, okay? Uh, but again, having the right tools for the job makes a big difference. And I wouldn't make, you know, I'm not, I uh, wouldn't be making anything, just whatever the, the company is willing to uh, kind of grant us on a on kind of a one-time buy. Um, that's what we'd be doing. Okay, so I did, uh, as you can see, I did my tops, and now I'm gonna do the bottoms, or pardon me, do the, uh, do the handles starting at the bottom. And all I'm gonna do here is, if you recall, I started in the center, I came all the way around and stopped here, uh, where it over, these webbing, this webbing overlaps a little. Now, how much you overlap it is up to you. you. In fact, you don't, you could butt it up against one another if you wanted to. I found sometimes though that the white will, um, Will, will kind of peek out if, if I don't overlap it a little bit. So I choose to overlap it. If I overlap it by the dot on one side, I try and overlap it on t by the same amount on the other side so that the handle lengths will be the same uh, from side to side. And uh, what else do you need to know? That's probably it. The, um, I uh, Again, just we're gonna stay about an eighth of an inch or so away. And I'm gonna, I do, uh, looks like three, uh, uh, three stitches and then back tack that is about right. This, uh, again, it would be best if this was stuck down. So consider doing that for your project uh, if you can get your hands on some of that double-sided tape. Otherwise, you can do it just the way I'm doing it here. So I'm gonna sew this. I'll sew it up just prior to the uh, top line and then I'm just gonna uh, pivot go over and pivot and then go down so you'll see what I'm gonna do here okay so one thing that uh, um, I wanted to point out about that, uh, similar to what we discussed in the lab or in the class, I held the panel just snug. I didn't like, I didn't, I didn't hold it so tight that it distorted, but I just made sure that it was a nice snug um, uh, uh, fit as it was going down through the uh, down through the needle. So here, I'm, again, you would be lifting your. Your presser foot, I just lift it with my knee, I pivot, I lower, and in this case, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna count here. Um, oh, by the way, I'm using on my Juki today, uh, five millimeter uh, stitching, 
which is uh, you could if you have this sale rent machine you could do five or six without a problem if you have a home machine try and just do a longer stitch uh, it doesn't need you don't need a bunch of stitches here but I'll just see how many I can get it's the other thing about a needle positioner is I just tap the treadle and it just does one stitch so it's really kind of nice that way and then as I come close to this I don't want it to go off the edge so I used my back um, my back pedal the, the the pedal to make it go in reverse so that I could position the needle uh, perfectly there right. lift my foot turn the work start sewing again So, get this out of here, turn the threads. Um, all right, so you can see I did haul one side. Sorry, I don't have fancy camera equipment. I'm just using my iPad to tape this. Um, and so now I'll turn it off so you didn't, again, I'm doing the exact same thing on the other part of the handle, and I'll come back when it's time to um, sew up the sides. All right, we're back. So I've got um, I've got my handles uh, on, I've got my tops on, and now it's time to put the bag together in terms of um, putting the sides together. And uh, to do that, you can see. And sorry about the angles, but hopefully, again, you're trying to get it. Uh, you're get getting the hang of it here. Uh, I'm simply going to uh, put the black webbings that I that I sewed to um, sewed on each side. I'm going to put those together so that they uh, match up perfectly on the top. I'm going to pull down the uh, material tight. Now, if you wanted to staple this, you sure could. Uh, I'm not going to just because I've uh, have a, you know pretty good experience with this sort of thing, so I don't really find I need to do that anymore. But when I was getting, just getting used to it, I did it all the time and found it very helpful. So feel free to staple it if you want. I'll still say staple today on really long panels if I'm doing uh, marine canvas work, you know. But for this little project, I think this is fine. I've got, um, uh, I actually have a special uh, gauge that helps me keep a straight line uh, that we talked about in the uh, in the class, but again, you would just use your Harbor Freight magnet or your Sailrite magnet, whatever, to create a little um, a little guide for yourself. That's good. All right, so I'm just gonna do uh, I'm gonna do a little bit less than I'm gonna do like a half an inch seam allowance, as we kind of talked about, which is kind of typical. Uh, if you did bags all the time, you could go three eighths or quarter inch. I'm just um, referring to the general allowances we would do with marine canvas so all right so i am going to kind of back tack this pretty good uh, because there's a lot of stress that'll come on the on the bag so feel free to go a couple of times go all the all the way up past the material sometimes that's easy uh makes it makes a good uh a good first uh, tack of the 
of the seam. Um, but now I'm just going to sew it together. that easy. So now you can see we've got the side of a bag together and um, and this is a question a lot of people had when we were just talking it through at the at the class but then how do you you know what's up what's up with this well this is what really makes the bottom and all I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab the two notches that aren't sewed to anything, right? So here's the new seam up here. Here is the bottom of the bag. I'm just going to squeeze that all together. And line up. Uh, line it up that way. So you can see... This might be one because there's going to be some bulk here, so I think I could hold it through, but, well, you know, I won't hold it through. I'll just show you how you should do it. <clears throat> you felt like you had good uh, grip on the fabric, you could just pinch it together and sew it through. The other thing uh, you certainly could do, you know, start at the corner here, and you're just going to create, just go ahead and staple it. Uh, do it inside your within that half an inch, right? So you want uh, you want the staples to be inside your seam allowance. Yeah. I'm only going to do it in three places, but do it as much as you think you need to. Uh, because it's inside the half an inch, you could sew this, and then uh, you could then take the, the seams out. Or, pardon me, the staples out uh, once you sewed it all the way through. So a lot of the other techniques we talked about, you'd take the uh, the staples out as you were sewing, uh, but this is, a, you know, this, this you could do either way, I guess. This one takes a little finagle in here, but... So... Now that I stapled it, that there, I'm just going to, and this is another one where you want to back tack it all the way to the end. You can back tack it off the fabric uh, for a few, you know, a click or, or so if you wanted, um, so that the, the thread tends to come over the edge that way, which is kind of nice. I uh, don't always have Now, what I'll do, because there's going to be also a fair amount of stuff getting jammed in the bottom of the bag, now I'm pulling those staples. Again, I just use a simple, simple uh, staple puller. Just uh, run it through. If it sticks a little bit, you can just uh, pry it off. It works out fine. I'm going to run a second. Now I'm going to run a second stitch inside of the one I just did, just for reinforcement. So again, so you don't have to get bored watching me snow, uh, sew all day, I am just going to flip things around, do the other side, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. All right, so we're just about done. Uh, now it's kind of the moment of truth where we're going to uh, put it, you know, turn it around. But high level, you can see, I just sewed up the, uh, the corners and then sewed the sides, did it on both sides. Uh, and then what you're going to do is you're going to, just reach down to one of these edge, one of the edges of the bottom, just grab it, and then just kind of, sometimes you have to manhandle it a little bit. You know, it's sale material, so sometimes it wants to put it back a little bit. All right.
side was doubled up, so it's even a little harder to do. I have in the past, if, this, if these edges were getting a little stubborn, I took that, uh, that staple puller that I have. And you can take, don't take the uh, edge on the staple puller side, but the, um, the back edge, you can stick it into the corners and um, get a little bit more purchase on it. Okay, and then with that, that is your uh, that is your tote made out of recycled sail material. So if you're a sailor or a boater, it's kind of fun to have uh, what has basically taken boats uh, out to sea, but have uh, lost their shape and all that, and given them new life. Otherwise, they'd end up in a uh, in a landfill. But you can see this is a real nice uh, real nice tote. So you have all the equipment. If you have questions, you know how to get a hold of me. Uh, you could, uh, I think, also leave uh, comments down below, and I'll try and answer them. Um, you should have my card, though, for my business, Seabound Canvas, remember? And aside from that, uh, we'll see you either at the next class or on the water. See you later.